Nigeria is once again remembering and celebrating its armed forces. However, some relatives of troops who have passed away are stating that they are being ill-treated. And the responses to the illegalization of Amotekun depict that the initiative might stay longer than anticipated. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Izewike. As Nigeria marks this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day, families of soldiers who paid the ultimate prize while fighting the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast and other security challenges across the country are crying for help. Some of them have recounted the difficulties they now encounter in the struggle for survival. Some have also stated that they have not been officially informed of the death of their loved ones. Shouldn't we be treating these people better than this? Joining me to have a conversation on this are two people. Sam Adelike, political analyst, thank you very much for your time. Good to be here. Good evening. Good evening. And of course, we have Obi Adegbo, legal practitioner. Thank you very much. Good to be here again. Okay. The question is very straightforward. How have we fared in taking care of our as servicemen? To begin with, it's important that we, we acknowledge the work of the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian police, Nigerian Navy, and all the servicemen over the years. You know, it's, it's been a lot of work in terms of being at the battleground, the battlefront, and even representing Nigeria outside of the shores, you know, the Ekomog wars and all that. But unfortunately, so much work has not been done over the years, especially for the families of the fallen heroes and the fallen soldiers. We, we have a case whereby, you know, sometimes these families admit that yes, the, the, they are being paid, the gratuities and the benefits of their, of their deceased um, relatives, but the, the percentage is so low. And the more these people die, the more they need to be replaced with new people and with new young Nigerians to enlist in the army. But when we keep hearing stories of the trauma and the trouble and the process that takes so long for these people to get the benefits of, of their diseased loved ones, it discourages people. Because people should be proud to represent their country. You know, like, like, like the saying in the US, you know, where, wherever you're going and you see the uh, a serviceman, you, know, you, you, you respect and thank you for your service. But how many of us can really say that my life ambition, my goal is to be a policeman, to be an army official? You know, going by the statistics so far, and especially, that of the Amnesty International, especially when they brought out the report that about a thousand Nigerian servicemen were buried in unmasked graves. You know, so these these, these stories that come have a way of dampening, and it's it, it's it's a mixed bag. While we appreciate the work that the, that the, that soldiers are doing, keeping back uh, the the terrorists, but also how are we holding those who are in charge of this of these commands accountable? I think that's a big question here. Over to you, Obi. What do you... Um, it's 2020, <laughs> and the same stories we've been talking about, the same challenges, mm. seem to still be with us years after that war. Well, first of all, I want to point out that we are faced with a war that we never planned for, and a war we never budgeted for. And do we plan for wars? No. This, this Boko Haram started off as a small thing, but now it's, it's, it's obvious it's a war. Do you understand? So the army has to adjust itself very well to the to, reality. To, to reality of war, war time as against peace time. And it seems as if there's been a lacuna between them adjusting. And also, you know, you know most of the war we have are won on cyber. You know, cyber in the sense that you do a lot of marketing, you do a lot of talking. You do a lot of, oh, we, 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 we killed 1,000 members of Boko Haram. Oh, we did this, we did this. So, so they have to, and then sometimes there's a, there's, um, there's, um, a, there's, there's a delay or a deliberate suppression of amount of people that died. 
And if, if, the, if the army does not tell the people that 100 people died, how would they now release the name of 100 people? But why do you think this is so? Because each individual who put down their life for this country deserves to be Honored. recognized on their individual mm. uh, merit and not as a collective, faceless uh, group of people. You see, it, it is the, it is maybe, maybe it's down to the Nigerian way of handling things. Some have cited security reasons. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's because of security reasons. Because all that, all that is, it's, um, it's, um, it's, um, it's not, uh, would I say it's an emotional, it's a war. War are fought on the war front, but more psychological. Oh, we have we have done this, we have done that. So, in the in, in for security reasons, if they now tell us that oh they killed 100, 1,000 soldiers were killed, it will not all go well for us as Nigerians, and it will it will not encourage people to enlist, and to not encourage, and then the budgeting and everything. So that's that's my I'm, I'm looking at it from the government perspective. As we were talking, I was thinking we seem to remember these people when we have this Remembrance yeah. Day. January 15th. Every mm -hmm. other time, their situation is sort of pushed to the mm. background and mm. not on the fore. Is that the only reason why this day is commemorated, to in, highlight in fact, these <laughs> challenges? You know, this, this is a global um, celebration and a global remembrance. It's not just peculiar to Nigeria. But, but before... No, we, we switched our dates, so it can be peculiar to us. Oh, well. Now the, 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 the main the main issue in the midst of all this is 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 that accountability. You know, I, I'm trying to keep a smiling face because they do say that most times Nigerian analysts are always angry and they're talking. You know? so, 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 so so this is a new year. But then coming back to this serious issue, I, I can't forget the, the, the experience and the story of the the assassinated COA, COAS, that's um, General Abadi, mm. that was just killed you know, um, in a very on, on, on civilized way, an old chief of army staff. And why did that happen? Well, he was assassinated on his way from his farm. And that was a few days before he was supposed to testify regarding a corruption charge leveled against him that he embezzled billions mm -hmm. of naira. Now, he's just one out of many other ex-service generals who have been, at every point in time, once they leave service, there's always a... a an accusation levelled against them about how funds have been mismanaged. Now, when, you, when soldiers who are supposed to lay down their lives see how their generals, how the big people in, 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 at the top of the command are spending money and they are suffering, they are not being paid their allowances, they are not eating well, they are not dressing well, their lives, you know, so these are things that we should be putting forth at the front border on a daily basis. And on a day like this and this period of this remembrance, we should keep asking, how long will we keep tolerating incompetence, non-accountability, and corruption in the service? Because the, service, the military is supposed to be a disciplined institution. And when people who are supposed to hold you know, the, 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 the force, the gates of this institution are um, strong and not doing what they're supposed to do, it's, it, it begs so much to, 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 to question. It's, it's sad. Let, really. let me pick your brain on the issue of uh, the way that the debt of relatives. You alluded to it mm, earlier when right. you spoke. Uh, the, the debt of relatives that are serving mm. in the armed forces, mm. some in recent times, the Boko Haram insurgency, some relatives have come up to say that they don't usually get official notification right. uh, from the military, that sometimes they just get information from a military mm. sources mm. and then it turns out that this is true. What must change with this narrative, considering that these people are paying the supreme price? Well, let, let us analyze how it happens. Imagine there's a heated war, and maybe the Nigerian side fell, and Boko Haram is in charge of the group. It, 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 has, to take on, it has to take them to, re, to go and regroup and come back and get them out before they can retrieve the dead bodies. So it depends on how long in between the people fell and when they could retrieve them to be able to ascertain. It is from the, it is from the, um, it's from the, um, the name tag that they can now confirm that so, so, so and so person died. If not, it is gossip. Now, what they have to do is to look for a way to now know that, okay, 
we are going to war front, name tag, let us say these are the amount of people that went, these are their names, and then you have a roll call. But this, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. They seem not to, they, 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 there seem to be a flaw it's somewhere with it's, 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 communicating yeah. that, oh, we're sorry to um, let you know that you, you know. at least so that these people can grieve even properly. Even public, they shouldn't they be should leaving. Their, their, their families yes, know. the uncertainty Sorry. of not knowing. It is, it is all the secrecy that is behind this fight of Boko Haram. And I don't know why. I, I know, yes, because of intelligence. But the secrecy is getting too much. Because the family that are there have to be assisted. Because They're talk talking about that assistance. Uh, some of the families have come out to say, a, a widow was interviewed. I was reading so many sad mm -hmm. stories that really actually broke my heart. Yeah, some of them say um, it's been years since their spouses died and they're yet to get their pensions and their gratuity. And the treatment that they get is not something that is pleasing. And sometimes these officers are the sole breadwinner the family, of yeah. the family. What needs to change? How can we affect change in this? Because we already know there is a problem. Yes. Let me take okay. a question to you, Sam. Um, I, I know of a church and an NGO that they do something called Widows Relief um, and Assistance Program, specifically for the widows of soldiers and slain policemen. Now, what do they do? They, they ensure that the, the widows, now they have a database and they go around to all the barracks, getting the data of these women and the families and enrolling them in the program in which they are teaching them skills and empowering them, educating the women especially. Because if you are able to empower a woman, the family is taken mm. care of. You know, to be honest, one cannot do so much when this deed has been done. Because the, 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 the leadership of the army and the other servicemen, they, they take dressing, so to speak, from commander-in-chief. Everything starts rises and falls on leadership head, yeah. because even if we prefer solutions now and the man at the top does not does not does not lead by example does not hold everyone accountable there is little we can do so what can we do and what can nigerians do at this point in time just just, just the way we go during december periods to give the orphanages food and all that let us also think about the servicemen those that we can sponsor the education i mean the, the children you know, put one in university, give one a, a, a means of livelihood so that while we get the elections right, you know, voting in the right leadership, the right power, uh, people in power, we, we will be able to, you know, effect change in this short term. Um, um, the the list is still talking about what we can do. Yeah. Some people would say the least that can be done, we have barracks, we have um, uh, police barracks yeah. and the likes, and these are some of the places that they leave, right? right? I, I, had, I did a documentary sometime last year with widows, and one, thought, one of them spoke about the fact that she was made to come up with one point something million wow. within three months, or they will be you know, evacuated. Rejected. Another told me that she and her children were removed from the premises where they were staying, mm -hmm. and the doors locked. She had to go naked wow. to... Um, speak against them. These sorry tales repeatedly. The state of our barracks and an, an ISO. is an eyesore. Why is this conversation persistent? Why do we keep talking about how we can give a fixed leave to mm. the army barracks or the police barracks? You see, the, you know, when we think about a hero's past and what they saw, and after they left, and uh, the, now the government has to pull money together to build houses for them. It makes you see the reasoning of the present heroes, in quote, that, ah, this one is not my father's job. Mm -hmm. If I die, what will happen to my children? Let me gather what I can gather for my children. That's, that's the mentality. But nevertheless, I would, I would suggest that they put something aside, not aside. There should be a scheme whereby if you live, there should be life after barracks. Because life after barracks means you giving up the comfort of the barracks, giving up the comfort of your home. The government should have a scheme whereby you can buy a house from that your salary and know that that is your place. When you retire, you move into it. And not, not, just, not just a house that will be in the breeze that they'll be building on breeze, but nothing on the ground. There would be a scheme 
that uh, maybe a private developer will come, have a scheme, and it will be allocated to the ranks, uh, file, ranks and file, not the orgasm. <laughs> we know what happens when your guy is at the top. <laughs> Let, let's, yeah, what's your take on that? Um, to, to, to be honest, I, I think when we start court marshalling corrupt military men who are sitting on the billions of naira allocated to the military, then change will start happening. There is money being channeled, billions of naira being channeled and allocated to the, for the military every year. Mm -hmm. But these monies keep disappearing. Our barracks and our police academies and our defense academies should be the pride of the nation. But we don't have this because some people are thriving on that perpetual war that is going on. Mm. So once we get to a point whereby these people, they, you know, they, there's so much injustice in Nigeria. There's so much impunity in which people get away with things across all levels. So today, or this period, is, is a period for the military. How can we ensure that justice prevails? And those who are at the top, who are not going to the, to the, to the front lines, those who are in the offices, those who are in the army headquarters, who are symphonic money meant to buy arms, to, meant, meant to, meant to um, give welfare to these people, until they start getting that justice and that trial, because of course, the military should be secret because of the things that were disclosed. But until you start knowing that, okay, son has been jailed, son has, been, um, has, has, has refunded the money, Things have been done properly. People start approaching this with that true service and that sacrifice that comes with that profession. Okay, uh, we've been talking a, a lot about the welfare yeah. of the ex-servicemen and their relatives. It's a day for remembrance. Yeah. Shouldn't we also be highlighting some of the failures of the institution and some of these, including the people that are serving now, uh, would it be inappropriate for us to look at how they can be better on this day? Yes, it, it, it will not be inappropriate. But you see, it's one thing saying it, and it's another thing, they imbibing the change. You see, um, you see when, there's, when there's a lacuna in the country, a lot of people, uh, a few people um, capitalize on it and make gain. And because they're making gain, it's difficult for them to change. There was um, a, a, a relative of mine was made the MD of an oil company. He's much older than me. So he called me, said, what are your thoughts on this, sir? I said, sir, develop the place. When you develop the place, you can now have goodwill, and then you make more money than running down the place. People don't understand that when something is working, there's prosperity for everybody. But when the place is run down, they start eating the crumbs and fighting over crumbs. But if we have a situation whereby there's a, there's a housing estate for everybody and things are working, everybody is happy, then you, 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 you'll be happy. And you, 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 because you're giving out contracts for whatever. I don't know how to how to do their things. To, how it it do will be practically impossible for everybody to be happy in this country <laughs> that we have. No, but, but at least, but to, at a least certain degree, to a certain degree, something everybody, must have yes. been seen right. to be done. Let me, let me, let me take your mind back to sometime last week when there was a video of some army officers, you know, harassing. Um, um, civilians and saying on the highway, on the highway yeah. and bragging that they cannot you know, use the language that they use now will be inappropriate on air, mm -hmm. that they cannot do anything. What will they do? These are some of the behavior. And we also have ceaseless reports of harassment by and these rape. officers who should be watching over uh, these civilians. What is your take? Before I forget, the Wadumi situation. We still don't have an update on some of those officers who were found culpable in the investigation that followed that incident. Where is the place hmm. of accountability and justice when um, crimes are committed? The, the government has a role to play in securing the lives and property of Nigerians and also the dignity of Nigerians. Now, that video last week appalled, everyone was appalled. And ordinarily, ordinarily, when such went viral, there should have been an immediate action. Yes, there was a statement put out by the, by the army rank and fire, you know, but we know that such statements are just meant to, to, like, to window dress yeah. situation. You know, it simply shows that 
or it simply not, not only shows, it simply reinforces the fact that the army and the military and the security apparatus do not respect the ordinary Nigerian. And sometimes I ask myself, what exactly do they teach them at the Nigerian Police Academy? at the Nigerian Defense Academy in Zaria. I did not thought to, to respect humans, to respect civilians, because the so fact how can as, this as, change? Let's see if so we can... How, how, how can this change? We all know how it can change. By, by, by taking to the streets and demanding that people strive to be respected and those who value people's rights should be brought to book. But then, who will take to the streets when people <laughs> are also fearing for their lives? No one <laughs> wants to be shot. No one wants to die. No one wants to be jailed and forgotten in prison. You know, so that fear of tomorrow, which also is is um, emphasized and 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 reinforced by poverty in the land. People are hungry. So if um, someone is going to the streets and then there is a counter protest sponsored by the people in power. Yes. You know, how, how can this be sustained? You know, so it's a That'll pretty... <laughs> yeah, mm. dicey one. Mm. Um, in 30 seconds, mm. if you can, we only have one more minute on this segment. Mm. Final thoughts on the Remembrance Day. The Remembrance Day, the, um, these are heroes and they should be treated as such. The government should bend over backwards to see that these are boys that we sent out to kill, to die for us. Uh, uh, they can rest in peace because their families should be taken care of and not only taken care of, should be seen to be happy. Thank you very much, lady and gentlemen. Thank, thank you, you very much for your thoughts. All right, thank you for staying with us thus far. Up next, the betting pants of Amotek is up for discussion. Stay with us.